G'day guys, my name is Will Kitching and welcome back to a brand new video on my channel. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use different types of fishing lures and what situations they are best used in. We're going to focus on soft plastics, hard bodies, vibes, surface lures and chrome slugs. I'll also be showing you lots of video clips of me actually using those types of lures to show you the technique and the retrieval and give you examples so you can go do it yourself. This is actually the third and final video for my series Lure Fishing for Beginners. In my first two videos, I taught you what gear and line you'll need and the top five lures for getting started with lure fishing. So if you want to go back and watch those first, I'll leave the links to both of those in the description below, so go click on those. Before we get started, I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribe if this video helps you. Um, leave a like rating, it helps more than you can imagine and share this video with any friends that you think it could help. Anyway, the light's fading here in my backyard, so without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, so first up we have these guys, soft plastics. Now, these are a very, very versatile lure, and many species will hit as soft plastic. These come in all sorts of styles, shapes, colours, sizes, the best thing to do is match the hatch. Whatever bait fish you're seeing, or whatever bait fish or bait that your target species um, likes to eat, that's the sort of soft plastic that you want to go for. For example, you will see a lot of Mulloway fishermen um, using these really big paddle tail soft plastics, and that's because Jewfish love to eat mullet, big mullet. So that's what they're trying to imitate. Now when you're using soft plastics, the main thing to do is uh, making sure that hook is the right size and that the jig head is the right weight for where you're fishing, I guess. And that will depend on current or wind or depth. When you're fishing up on the flats for flathead, about a quarter ounce jig head is usually the most that you'll need, especially in the really shallow water. In terms of a hook, um, you can see that's about halfway down the plastic, actually a bit shorter. And um, you just want enough that, you know, if a fish grabs that, there's enough space there for it to um, hook it in the lip. Now, let's get into the main reason I'm doing this video and show you guys how to actually use these lures uh, when you get out on the water. As I said, I'll be showing you some video examples as well as we go here. Firstly, the most popular way to use soft plastics is you want to do the longest cast that you possibly can and you're going to let it sink right to the bottom. Now once your lure's on the bottom, you want to give it a hop or two um, up off the bottom and then let it sink again, hitting the bottom. When this happens, you want to wind up your slack line, um, make sure that your lure's on the bottom and just repeat all the way back to yourself. Got one right here, at my feet. Now this is a really great technique for if you're fishing land based with soft plastics, but also out of a boat if you're fishing for species like flathead, around sand flats, um, up in the shallows, around drop offs, um, or even deeper water for other species as well. Now the next technique is what we call the slow roll, and this is best for fishing around structure. So if you want to use soft plastics around say rock walls or pontoons maybe for mangrove jack um, or jewfish, things like that. This is the technique you want to use there. Now a slow roll is just another way of saying a slow wind, where you may not let it sink right to the bottom, you may let it sink halfway down or even have it just under the surface and just be slowly winding it back to yourself. Now you can just use a normal jig head for this, however if you're throwing it into really snaggy country such as um, fallen timber or things like that, a lot of people use what we call a weedless hook or a worm hook. I'll put one of those up on the screen now. Basically, this sits in the soft plastic differently to a normal jig head um, with the hook point not exposed. So that way if you throw it right up into timber, most of the time it'll just bounce over and you won't get snagged, whereas a normal jig head you'll almost lose it every time. Now when you're fishing sort of shallow reef areas, you can either hold the rod in your hand 
and hop to soft plastic um, just up off the bottom really but in deeper water you can either um, you know do that or you can even just drop it down so it's close to the bottom and leave it in the rod holder to jiggle around and I've caught plenty of good fish that way as well and you can fish with bait or another lure um, on the other side of the boat. Bit small. There we go, now that's a nice snapper. Another secret little tip for soft plastics is to put a little bit of scent on it. Um, which you can buy bottles of uh, at tackle shops or online. Alright, moving on. Now what we have is hard bodies, also known as uh, crankbaits. Once again, these lures can be used a few different ways. You can use them around sand flats, around structure, or even trolling is a good way to use them. You can also use these land baits, they're a good option. And if you're fishing off the rocks as well, you can use these. Now as I said in my previous video, these have a bib on the front, so as you wind it, that's going to make it dive down um, through the water column. Now, as you can see, some have a larger bib than other lures. Um, the larger the bib, usually the deeper it will dive. So they dive to different depths, and usually it tells you on the packet how deep they dive. It depends what species you're fishing for and what depth you're fishing in, um, which will determine um, you know, what depth of lure you choose. For example, if you're fishing for flathead, Say you're fishing over a sand flat that's only about a metre deep, you'll only need a shallow diving lure that goes around that deep or on, along the bottom, um, as that's where flathead live. However, if you decide you're going to maybe troll for flathead in about three metres of water along a drop-off, um, you might want to go for a, a bigger bib to make sure it gets down that three metres. So the main thing is with the hard bodies is to know what part of the water column or what depth um, your target fish is going to feed in and get a lure that dives down to that depth. Now, how to work these lures when you get out on the water. If fishing sand flats for flathead, for example, you want to cast as far as possible away from yourself. Once it's out there, you can either just do a slow roll, where, I, as I said earlier, you just slowly wind it and it's just going to kick along looking like a fish. Now, you want to do that all the way back to yourself um, until it's at your rod tip and you're going to cast again. You'll also see that you can also do uh, slow sweeps of your rod tip or sharper jerks um, and that'll get the lure sort of twitching and pausing and sometimes if they're not really fired up that might be what you need to, um, to trigger a bite. My suggestion would be just to switch things up and see what the fish are wanting. Now if you're fishing structure it's the same thing, however you just want to make sure you're not casting your lures anywhere really snaggy um, because as you can see these two trebles on the bottom um, are going to catch up on pretty much anything that runs over. They're good for fishing um, pontoons and rock walls where you can just run it along beside it um, and fish will come out from that structure and, and eat these. Whereas um, you know mangroves and fallen timber these aren't as good but you can put it in beside a fallen tree or something and work it back. Um, but yeah, a little bit more risky. Finally, the last technique that I'll say um, for these lures is trolling, which is probably one of the most simple ways that you can fish with lures. And it's where you just put it out the back or put one out each side of the boat and just slowly drive along and they'll just kick along. All right, let's see how we go. Put that out the back. Let a fair bit of line out, but not too much. Yep. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He might go very, very close. Very close. Now, depending on the situation, you want you want to have it a fair way out the back. Um, you don't want it near the motor noise or too close to the boat, as that can spook fish. You want it a fair way out the back, but not so far that you've got almost all your line out or, um, you know, it's that far out the back, it's going to get caught on things if you turn corners and things like that. The only thing I'll say is, um, if you have two lures out, put them at different distances 
So when you turn a bit, they don't end up um, crossing over and getting tangled. Trolling hard bodies is a great technique for species like Taylor and Trevally, um, flathead in the estuaries, and then you get out to, you know, mackerel, tuna, all that sort of stuff offshore. My final tip for hard bodies, no matter how you're fishing them or where you're fishing them, is to keep your rod tip nice and low um, so, you know, they don't just come straight up to the surface. You want them to sort of stay down. While you're winding them in or, or using them, you should feel your rod tip um, vibrating. If it's not, they either have weed on them or they're not swimming right. So just make sure you check that as well. Alrighty, up next we got these guys, chrome slugs. And uh, let me tell you, they are one of the most underestimated lures, I reckon. They're a little bit of a specialised lure, um, but for some species and situations, they are absolutely deadly. So pretty much these are made out of metal. They're even sometimes called metals. So they're nice and heavy. You get a nice long cast and you can wind them really fast. The most simple way to put it is the technique for these guys is um, just to keep your rod tip low and crank them pretty much as fast as you can. One of the best times to use these is when there is a bust up as we call it. So this is when fish are feeding on the surface and you'll see them splashing and smashing the bait fish on the surface. Um, there'll be a big boil up usually. And yeah, that's the best time to get these out and chuck it right in the middle of that. Fish like Taylor, Trevally, mackerel and tuna especially, um, kingfish even, you know, all those sorts of species are all types of species that bust up on the surface, especially in big schools and absolutely chop up the bait. Now, there are many bonuses of this lure because when the fish are feeding like this, it's an absolute feeding frenzy for them and anything silver pretty much that you put in there, they're gonna hit. And a lot of the time, when you cast these in there before you even wind, you'll be on. The other thing is, they're that fired up that if they see something moving fast, they are going to chase it down and just smack it. So if you see the fish busting up, cast this right in the middle and um, literally just start cranking it as fast as you can. Once again, with your rod tip low, um, or if you want, let it sink a couple of seconds and then just crank them in and you should be on. They're also perfect for fishing in the surf because you can punch them out a long way out into the, the deeper gutters. And when the tailor are on along the surf beaches or around rocky headlands and things like that, um, yeah, they're gonna hit those. These are also one of the best lures when you're fishing for mackerel. So once again, as I said, if they're busting up, you can use it. But also if you're fishing with bait, um, anchored or drifting and you have baits out, put those in the rod holder and have a rod rigged up with um, one of these on there. Cast it out, let it sink a little bit and absolutely crank it in. And a lot of the time um, you get mackerel doing that even when they're not busting up. Get the, get get the other slug out. Yeah. Oh, one. oh, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Got it. Alright, you do with that one, I'm fishing. Yep. Mackerel also tend to school up around shipping channel beacons and markers, so there's another place to chuck these down and um, give them a crank as well. The one thing I will say about these is though, or any lure, sometimes fish, especially like tuna, um, if they're feeding on a really little bait fish and your lure's too big, even by an inch, they will not hit it. Um, same thing, if the bait's too big, and you have a lure that's too small, um, they won't hit it. So you've got to have a couple of sizes to try out in those situations. So if you're casting into a bust up and you're not getting hits for some reason, that's probably the reason. All right, moving on. Lure number four, we have Vibes. And once again, as with all the lures, they come in different types, different sh shapes and sizes. So we'll talk about those next. Now they're called this, Vibes, uh, it's short for vibration bait. Now as you lift or wind these through the water, they have a nice tight, fast, sharp shimmying action, um, which sends off a lot of vibration and you'll feel it through your rod tip as well. As I said earlier in the video, fish absolutely love vibrations, it's one of the ways that they hunt down their prey. Now as I said, you have lots of different types of vibes, you have your soft vibes, um, you have your hard vibes. You have your little metal blades like that one um, and they even come in shrimp imitations like that so there's lots of different types once again these can be used land-based or from a boat um, from land-based though the smaller ones work best 
and um, in a boat it doesn't matter, you can use whichever size or style you want. One of the most effective ways to fish with vibes though is out of a boat and either jigging it vertically or um, yeah, almost vertically, sort of up and down around deeper areas. They're nice and heavy usually so yeah, drifting those deeper areas, they work well there. If you have some structure down deep or you see some fish or bait holding down deep, uh, these are a good option. Now people do use these around snags, um, for you know barramundi, mangrove jack, fish like that. But as you can see once again, they usually have these two trebles underneath. So if you're dropping it down and lifting it up on snags, there's a good chance that they're going to hook onto something and um, once again you might lose it. But people do use it for that as well. Now the way to use these in shallow water is similar to soft plastics, um, but maybe not as aggressively. You just want to do a slow lift up as high as you can and then let it sink back down to the bottom. And repeat that until it's back at your feet. Fish on. Nice. Very nice. A big thing is to make sure it's actually vibrating. Um, you should feel it through your rod tip, especially if you're using braided line, which you should be with lures. Um, you feel it through your rod tip. If not, it's either tangled up on itself or it's got weed on it or something like that. So you want to make sure it's vibrating. Once again though, if you aren't getting any bites, you can try the sharper twitches um, to see if you can trigger a bite. Um, and once again, just mix it up, see what the fish want. And as I said, if you're in a boat, you can also fish it vertically underneath you, just lifting it up and you want to fish it close to the bottom, um, lifting it up and dropping it back down. Or if you want to try sharper ones, you can, but um, usually the lift and drop, they'll hit it on the drop a lot of the time too. Your smaller vibes, especially these shrimp ones, will get, you know, your flathead, brim, whiting even, uh, species like that. Whereas, you know, your bigger ones, you'll get dew, threadfin, snapper, reef fish, uh, your bigger flathead, your coral trout up north, all that sort of stuff. So they are very, very effective, especially when the fish are sitting down deeper and you need something to get down to them and, you know, get a bit of vibration to fire them up. Now, last but definitely not least, we have surface lures. And as you can see, they come in all sorts of sizes from these tiny little ones for whiting, brim, flathead, all the way up to ones that you'd use for GT, Spanish mackerel. Uh, you know, these are even smaller, they get way bigger than this. So, lots of options there. Fish are a lot more likely to feed on the surface early in the morning or later in the afternoon and even at night. When the sun's high in the sky in the middle of the day, usually they, um, yeah, they're not as brave to come up and uh, they're sitting a bit deeper. Now there's three different types of surface lures. I've actually got them all in my hands here, even though they're all different sizes. But we have poppers, which are a popular one. We have floating stick baits and sinking stick baits. And there's another example of a nice uh, sinking stick bait for you. Surface lures definitely have their situations. You can't use them everywhere. They're definitely great to fish over shallow areas, whether that be, you know, with your little ones here over shallow sand flats or your big poppers over shallow reef. Um, obviously, the shallower the water, the more likely fish are going to see what's going on on the surface just above them. You can also cast them around snags or structure where fish are going to be sitting there and see it and come out and hit them. Or you can use it when there's bait on the surface or even fish busting up. Once again, with surface lures, you want to cast as far as you can, unless you're casting at structure, of course. Now poppers, we'll talk about those first. You can see they have a cup face here. So when you bring that through the water, it's going to spray water out the front and that's going to attract fish. Now you want to wind up the slack line and as the line's getting tight, that's when you want to pull your rod again and the popper should be working like this. Obviously going closer and closer towards you, but every time you sweep your rod tip or jab it down, you want a bit of spray of water. Then you're going to pause it, wind up the slack and go again. Now for the smaller little poppers, you'll use on the flats for like whiting and brim you just want to give tiny sharp little twitches um, and they'll track straight back towards you and just spray little bits of water as they go for these bigger lures though you might have to give it a fair bit of a jab 
Um, after a couple of casts, you'll get a feel for it though, so you'll be all good. Now once again, to mix up retrieves, you can either do it quite constantly back towards yourself, or you can pop it and let it pause, even for a fairly long time, almost 10 seconds, before you give it a few more pops and then give it a pause. Um, so that's for everything from brim and flathead up to Spanish mackerel. Now I don't actually have a big floating stick bait, but this can be an example because you use them pretty much the same. Now these are a little bit different. They don't really spray water. Um, you can either keep your rod tip a little bit higher and wind it sort of constantly and it'll skip across the surface with the front of it skimming across the surface. Yes. There we have it. Or the second way is what we call walk the dog. So that's where you're going to have it zigzagging from side to side along the surface. And it looks amazing if you can get it right. So the way you want to do that one with the floating stick baits is to have your rod down to the side um, and point it down. So yeah, you want to just do jabs, short jabs, and that'll make it zigzag side to side. Got one. Look at that for a fish. Now, finally we have these things, sinking stick baits, which I still, um, I still call surface lures because a lot of the times the fish still get airborne or um, make a big splash on the surface and you're not fishing them, you know, really deep. They're, they're up near the surface anyway. So yeah, sinking stick baits, that's our last surface lures. Now, when you pick these up, you'll feel that they tend to be heavier and obviously that's because they've got a sink the other good thing about that is you can get a really nice long cast in with these. Now, as I said, they're good to use just underneath the surface, but you can sink these down a little bit as well if you think there's fish down a little bit deeper. Now, the good thing about sinking stick baits is when you bring them through the water, they actually swim a little bit by themselves. So um, just through the shape of them, they like to swim or they'll do a big S shape sort of glide. Now you can either just do a constant sort of wind with a little bit of a flick of the rod tip or you can put it to the side and do big sweeps and that lure is going to swim and then pause and as you wind up the slack line it'll sit there and you do another sweep and it'll swim and then you pause swim pause so they can be really really good they um they look real really realistic as they swim especially when you've got colors like this um, and once again mackerel tail up all that sort of stuff. Tuna. Tuna really love the um, sinking stick baits. So yeah, you can use them land based off the rocks in the surf um, and once again around bait schools or if you're fishing for mackerel and tuna, things like that. So they're really versatile lures. Well guys, as you can see, I left it a little bit late to film this video. So we're running out of light, but that is the end. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I really, really hope that you've got some tips out of it and you can go catch some fish yourself on some lures, um, get into it because it's great fun. I love my bait fishing and I'll probably do more of that than lure fishing, but yeah, lure fishing is great fun and it's good to mix things up every now and again, but I do understand it can be hard to get into it. So yeah, I really hope this has helped. Once again, guys, if you think this could help one of your mates, make sure you share it with them, get them onto it. Leave a like rating and a comment if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff and more fishing vlogs and action and everything like that. I love making the videos for you guys and I love hearing from you, so leave a comment. Until the next one, tight lines, get out there and um, get some fish on lures. Alrighty.